Well, it's early morning. It's Norman, Storm and Norman, our bottle-fed lamb. First bottle of the day. So I have to hurry up and get out there because he hasn't had anything all night. So he's generally pretty hungry in the morning. So I'm going to whisk this up right now. And we're going to hurry up and get out there and feed him for his first feeding. In case you guys are new around here, if any of you guys are, my husband and I live the pioneer lifestyle in 21st century in this log cabin that we built here. And right now you caught us right in the middle of bottle feeding a lamb. So we better get out there real quick. <laughs> Let's go. Ready to go see the babies? More money. It's about 15 degrees. It's kind of brisk today, and yes, I got my earmuffs on. How are you? Hi guys. You want a snack too? Uh. Come on. Come on, Norman. I never get sick of that. <laughs> I just love to watch them. One thing with the bottle feeding is I kind of like to simulate sort of like a, a mother or you would feed their baby. You know, they just kind of nibble a little here and there all throughout the day. And I don't like to give them just like two or three bottles a day um, because the risk of bloat could be a lot higher. So I generally, you know, give them six or seven feedings where he possibly won't eat as much. So uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of this. I'm going to give these guys some treats, give them some hay, and then I'll give them a little bit more. And I just, I'm here all the time so that I just come out a lot and feed them. So I think that works the best for them. And there's Mama Elsa, and she's with her little baby, Lanky Larry. And he's doing really, really good. And he's grown into his legs pretty good now because he had some long legs when he was born. It's like a little mini giraffe. This wind is relentless. You guys have been experiencing a lot of wind lately? It's been nuts. I mean, bad wind. <laughs> freezing, freezing. <laughs> Hi, little Larry. How are you? Do you want to meet your little friend? This is Norman. It's so neat to watch, to see how they grow and progress, and then they get bigger and thicker, and, and it is so much fun. In a little bit, we were going to have like romp room here. <laughs> they run and they buck. It's the funnest thing. So I can't wait to show you guys how they're just running around the yard. It's so cute. Yesterday, we didn't get to work on Mom's log cabin because we had lots of rain, lots of wind, then it turned to snow. It was just a crazy cold day, so we weren't able, it wasn't good working condition, so we didn't work on it yesterday. Okay, you can hang out a little bit. I'm gonna give everyone some treats. What's some hay?
We'll give this to your daddy. Hello, Rambo. Here, you guys can do this. Want a little bit more? You know, it's hard to believe that it's 15 degrees out and windy outside and we're going to be talking about gardening today. The building I just came in is over our root cellar here that I'm standing in right now where we're storing all of our produce that we had from last year and things that I have canned and that I've fermented and just basic storage for us. And so what I'm doing today is I'm getting some of our sweet potatoes that we grew last year because I am going to turn them into slips so that we'll have plants and grow potatoes for this year. sweet potatoes that I'm gonna bake for dinner tonight I think and then today we are going to get our sweet potatoes ready to start growing slips from the potatoes because it's getting close to springtime and when you grow sweet potatoes you want to plant them about three to four weeks after your last frost date we're in Missouri so everyone will be different, but it's three to four weeks after your last frost date when your temperatures of the soil are about 55 degrees or so. So you just gotta look and see. They don't like cold weather. They don't like cold soil, so it needs to be warmer. And the thing is with these sweet potatoes, it's gonna take about, you know, it could take about six weeks for them to start getting the slips that are long enough for you to plant. So that's why we're doing it now. It's February, so I'm gonna start planting them now. And I found, that these the orange sweet potatoes will take longer for the slips to start than these purple ones or the molokai sweet potatoes these will grow very very quickly i've noticed it's like wow all of a sudden they got the roots in them and they started growing really fast as opposed to the orange ones these take a little bit longer and you want to make sure when you guys are getting your potatoes that you are getting organic potatoes because if you go, and you can go to the grocery store, so let's say you don't have a garden and you don't have potatoes from last year like I do, you want to go ahead and go, when you go to the grocery store, get an organic potato because they'll put um, like sprout suppressing chemicals on a lot of the potatoes where they won't sprout. So it's important to get an organic potato and then you, know, you can go from there and you can grow it. So all you're gonna need is some jars and your potatoes and all I'm going to do, it's so easy, and a lot of you guys might remember when you were in school, you know, you used to do this all the time with your potatoes. You're going to fill them up with water. And then you'll need some sweet, some toothpicks too. It's three toothpicks per potato. So you'll find the potato 
that'll fit in the jar, right? Okay. I'll put one of my bigger ones in here. And then you're going to put the potato or the toothpicks in the bottom, like so. Just about three of them so that it can set in the water, like so. So I need a little bit more water in this guy. Now when you're doing this, you don't want to put like the whole potato in the water. It just needs a couple inches in here so that it's going to start rooting. So the first thing that you're going to see is some of the little roots starting to come out. You might see one little straggling root and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's starting to do it. And it'll start getting the roots and then eventually you'll start seeing these little slips, they call them, coming out of the top. And then generally from each one of these potatoes, you're going to get anywhere from 10 to 15 slips and those are basically going to turn into your your sweet potato your plants and then from each one of these slips like one of the slips you're going to get about five pounds of potatoes so when you go ahead and you're going to have 10 or 15 slips off of here i mean you're going to get a lot of potatoes from the, from them so this is easy i go ahead i'm just going to put this here in my window and i'm going to fill up all these jars and then they'll start to sprout and they look pretty too while you're watching them and then it can get you excited for springtime because you'll know it'll be pretty soon before you guys can start sprouting and growing again in the garden because it's been a windy winter how about you guys leave a comment below if it's been a really windy winter lots and lots of wind oh and here's another note when you guys are putting your sweet potatoes in when you do them you want to generally, do you see, see how it's kind of bigger at the bottom and pointier at the top? You want to put the bigger end in and that's where you're going to root it, like that. So that's not going to work. I think the hardest part of doing this is finding the potatoes that work in the jars that you can. <laughs> Last year, Doug and I, we decided in the because we love sweet potatoes here. So we went from two beds, raised beds, we did three raised beds. And I think that's perfect for us here because we do go through a lot of sweet potatoes. So I don't know if that's gonna work. Put it in just a little deeper. Perfect. And then the other thing you guys want to remember when you're doing this is that you will need to change the water. So as it goes on, the, the water is going to get kind of maybe dirty looking. Um, and, it, and you don't want, it'll start to smell too. Just make sure every couple weeks that you go ahead and change the water and clean off the roots a little bit. Now we plan here both white potatoes and sweet potatoes. And a lot of people ask, what's the difference? You know, which one's a better potato to grow? Well, I would say, you know, if you're watching your glycemic index, sweet potatoes are going to be much lower in the glycemic index. So your blood glucose levels aren't gonna rise as quick as if you had like a regular Yeah, I might have to say, sweet potatoes are probably one of my favorite foods. They are so helpful for you. They are so good for you. And they're loaded in vitamin A, which is great for your eyes and your skin and your hair. That one's a little crooked. <laughs> 
And the good thing, if you do want to control, you know, the blue blood and glucose levels, when you're eating your sweet potatoes, make sure you use some type of fat with them. If you put butter or ghee, or you can put avocado, eat avocado with it, or maybe put some nuts with it, and it'll just help when it absorbs into the body. It'll just go in much slower. All right. I have to get a few more jars. I'll do those later. But all I'm gonna do is basically just keep these in the window. I'll start watching them and get really excited when I start seeing little roots come from the bottom of them like that. And then they'll start producing my slips. And then in a few weeks, I will have, you know, little slips coming out of it. And generally when the slips are about five or six inches long, I'm gonna pull them off and then I'm gonna put them in another jar of water just like you would put flowers in a vase so that they'll kind of get some roots on them. And then from there, that's what I'm gonna plant. That is my plant that I'm going to plant and then make me have pounds and pounds of sweet potatoes for the 2021 season. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna wash these off for Doug and I and I'm going to bake these and then we'll have them for our dinner. We call it our lunch and dinner, the between lunch and dinner. And then here's a little fact. I, for years I didn't know this. I always said, oh, throw away the skin of the sweet potatoes. It's terrible for you. Well, it isn't because the skin of the sweet potatoes is loaded in fiber and it has lots of good stuff for it too. So it's okay to eat the skin of your sweet potatoes. Because I know a lot of people will throw them out, but it is good to eat those. As well as the regular white potato skin. We'll do this later. And then tomorrow we'll have some of our purple sweet potatoes. These are the most beautiful. I'll go ahead and show you guys now. If you've never seen a Molokai or a purple sweet potato, here I'll clean it off and show you how pretty it is. Look how beautiful it is. Isn't that gorgeous? Now watch when I cut it in half. I'll sacrifice one for you guys. And I know I'm not using a cutting board. Don't say anything. Look how beautiful that is. Aren't they just beautiful? It makes the best mashed potatoes. It's, I mean, because they look just like this, the color when you cook them, it doesn't change. Just gorgeous. I love these. And they, these purple sweet potatoes, the Molokai ones, they have, um, it's not sweet like a regular orange sweet potato or these Beauregard sweet potatoes. It's sweet but starchy. So it's kind of a mix between, I would say, a sweet potato and a regular potato. And there, it's just really good. It's just a good variation. So let's say, you know, I'm getting tired of having sweet potatoes because we do have a lot of them here. Then I can go ahead and do a purple sweet potato and it just kind of adds a little bit, you know, different taste to it. So it's good. So if you guys are looking, you know, and you don't want to just do regular, the orange sweet potatoes, try a different variety. There's so many. There's the white, they have white ones and then they have the lighter orange ones. So everyone has a little bit of a different taste. So, you know, be adventurous and try something new. And leave a comment below if you are going to try a different kind of potato. And like I say, if you can't find some of these, if you go to the grocery store, Many of the grocery stores will carry the different color potatoes. Just try to get an organic one, like I say, so you will make sure that you'll get the sprouts from it. Okay? All right. That was easy, quick and easy. So simple to start the sprouts. Great project for the kids to do, and you guys can do. Anybody can do it, and you want to plant some potatoes, just have a little area. You can do it. And uh, I'll look forward to following everyone's progress. Keep us updated on what's going on if your sweet potatoes are sprouting. Leave a, leave a comment, let us know what's up on your sweet potatoes, how they're doing, and you guys have a great day, and let's hear it for spring, because it's getting close, and I will see you guys later.